really obvious that he started to get tired. But not only that, he started kind of coming up with excuses. Personally, for me in a competition setting, I wouldn't be as nonchalant and just, you know, I, I'd have more of that kind of killer mentality. Um, but that's just me personally. Yeah, he quit. He basically tapped out. That's the first time we saw anything like that. Don't quit. You know, no matter what happens, sometimes the chips are going to be stacked against you. And you got to make the best of that situation and fight to the end. What's going on? Welcome back to KW Insight. And now we're heading into elimination rounds. Uh, where we'll get closer to the 10K prize. Today we have Cam versus Valiant and Young versus Xander. Let's get into the games between Cam and Eddie Valiant. In this match of Cam versus Eddie Valiant, there was a couple things that I noticed. Um, first off, one positive is that Cam kept constant pressure on Eddie. Um, whether that's changing directions, changing levels, um, mirroring his movement, going back and forth, um, shooting rounds down range, um, and not just blindly shooting, but shooting as Eddie's popping out, whether wh whatever side he's popping out on. Um, you know, he kept this pressure, and I think this pressure is very important in a one versus one um, type of scenario. Um, there's not your teammates to rely on, you can't take any break. Um, so keeping this pressure on Eddie, um, hoping that he might possibly slip up or make a mistake um, is important in my eyes. Um, you know, the flip side to that is the going back and forth, the mirroring. Um, you start to notice as the rounds go on, Cam's breathing gets a little bit heavier. Um, and I'm not sure if he just didn't pace himself enough or, you know, Eddie's movement of countering that and moving back and forth kind of gassed Cam out a little bit. Um, Cam starts to breathe a little bit harder, starts to make very, very minor mistakes. Um, not positioning himself. Eddie did a, a better job of positioning himself behind cover. Um, like we talked about before, using cover that's not directly in front of you, but to the side of you. Um, you know, is, is that something that you noticed about Eddie on the positive side? There was one particular situation where it's very similar to the situation between Sean and Gunner, where uh, Valiant was in the same spot that Sean was. There was that little L cutout mm -hmm. right there that he could have used as cover while trying to uh, get to Cam, but he kind of didn't, he didn't really use that spot, you know? So that's probably one thing I would have done better on Eddie's side is that there were certain situations where he probably could have used cover better. One thing that Valiant did that I thought was interesting was sort of his technique for offhand, left-handed shooting. Okay. What he did was um, he would, his form was correct in that he wasn't exposing his left shoulder while shooting left-handed, but he kind of had this modified grip where he used his right hand in the trigger guard and he would shoot with his right hand, but almost posture up as if he was shooting left-handed. Mm -hmm. So like, that's a really nice shortcut to shooting left-handed if you're not very comfortable with that. For the viewers at home, if you're, still, if you're still working on that, there's a nice halfway point. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that, um, there's a little detail that I think was necessary to, to talk about, to, show people back home that there's very, you know, uh, subtle things that a lot of players do that might go unnoticed. And on the real still side, um, you know, that transition of only switching the gun but not switching your hands makes it easy to quickly switch back. You don't have to change your guns, not a lot of movement. There's less chances of you messing up rather than you're just switching shoulders and coming back and right. forth. I mean, you know, we like to talk about switching hands a lot just, mm -hmm. uh, just for fundamentals. Yeah. But again, this is a 1v1 game. That split second of that little handoff that you gotta do sometimes mm -hmm. could cost you the game. So I think yeah. what he did here is he, either on his own or something he's seen before, he developed a nice way that he, um, is individual to him, you mm -hmm. know, that, that, that works for him. Um, one thing that I would have done differently, and I think we noticed this too, is that uh, it felt like a, too much of a friendly game. Yeah. Like I felt like, um, Cam was still kind of having fun with it, messing around, throwing mags. Mm -hmm. But Valiant was a little bit, um, I guess, more just, focused. Yeah, more focused. But I think sometimes when you kind of you know somebody and you play their game, it kind of it could throw, it could have thrown off Cam. You mm -hmm. know, could have even though like this worked out in Valiant's favor. There was a few points where maybe earlier in the match he could have gotten Cam's head a little bit earlier. Whereas I felt like Cam was playing a much better like. I'm gonna treat you like my friend, so it's not that serious. But at the same time, Valens try to stay serious. So yeah. there's that whole mind game of you know switching on and off between I'm playing against my friend versus I'm playing just against my 
my my opponent. You know, it, it seemed almost too much of a departure from the previous rounds that we saw from Cam, where Cam excelled. Um, you know, he felt comfortable, and this just felt it just felt too too friendly. You right. know, um, and and that can sometimes get into your mindset and change the way you play, maybe a little bit. Not as aggressive, not as focused. Um, and in the end, it, you know, Eddie was able to pull out the win. Um, and, and something that I would do different if I was in Cam's position is, and maybe not specifically his position, but just overall, is I, I would do my best to get up on points. You know, um, this game really boils down to if you have an early lead with points, it's extremely hard if you're behind to come back. Um, you know, so grabbing these objectives right off the bat. Um, you know, getting up on points and then you could have your fun. You know, you want to play around, he's your buddy, that's fine. Um, but I think in a, personally for me in a competition setting, I wouldn't be as nonchalant and just, you know, I, I'd have more of that kind of killer mentality. Um, but that's just me personally. Yeah. I mean, it's tough to do that sometimes, you know, considering you, you play with these people for so long, you end up, you know, building friendships with these people. And even if it's competition, sometimes it's just, you're, you're almost having too much fun. So that was cool to see, but it was a little bit good and bad. And the flip side to that is, you know, something that, that comes up in my mind is, uh, you know, Tom Brady used to figure out ways to get, you know, get pumped up, find something. Oh, you know, remember that one time he did something. Remember, you know, he talked about me this or that, you know, even if it's your friend, there's ways that you can motivate yourself and ways that you can, um, you know, find it deep within to kind of light a fire underneath your butt and, you know, get to it. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you just got to look at the opponent across you and just see them as a target. You know, you can't really get too familiar. You know, I think Valiant probably could have closed this out a lot sooner had he uh, kind of just viewed Cam as just just another opponent. Mm -hmm. For these games, we took a look at Q versus Sean. Q was finally able to go up against an opponent that matched him pretty well. And likewise, Sean was able to kind of like rise to the occasion. We saw him kind of growing, uh, maturing throughout this uh, series. And uh, I think what we saw right now is that Q brought out the best in Sean and Sean also brought out the best in Q. And what we ended up seeing was a very, very evenly matched fight. Mm -hmm. It tended to go back and forth, back and forth. Uh, both players almost have a similar style, you know, um, taking those athletic movements every now and then, Sean with the jump shot, Q moving into certain positions to gain a better feel of the match. Um, and I think that, you know, in the end, it was Sean's kind of athleticism um, that outshined Q's kind of uh, methodical yet accurate, you know, type of gameplay. Mm. I mean, I kind of have to disagree there in a, a little bit. I, I tend to feel that Quinn is a little bit more physical, mm -hmm. but there was something about, and I heard he was just talking shit, mm -hmm. you know, and that's not to say that Sean wasn't talking shit either. But again, like you said, they're very similar in not only the physicality they were matched, but I think even in the mental game, they're both talking trash to each other. So that kind of leveled the playing field in that for the first time, maybe Q didn't feel like he had an advantage in the physicality part mm -hmm. of it, nor did he have a true advantage on the mental side. What he was probably trying to accomplish by, you know, coming in very confident. You know, I heard he was, Q was very confident going into this. He wasn't fearing anybody. He said he wasn't really, didn't really feel challenged by anybody. But what we saw here was completely different. We saw Sean kind of just become almost like this different player. And he wasn't talking that much shit in the beginning. Mm -hmm. He seemed like he was very focused. He was very, a lot quieter than usual. Mm -hmm. Then as soon as his confidence went up, he was yeah. able to score some points on Q. That's the trash right. talk started, started yeah. and they yeah. both started going back and forth. And it's the first time we saw, I guess like, evenly matched throughout every aspect of the game. Mm -hmm. And it's the first time that we saw a challenge really come into play and be the defining moment. Yeah, I mean, that must have really been uh, surprising for Q, considering yeah. that it looked like he was on his way to victory, looked like he's on his way to advance. He probably thought he had it in the bag, uh, but once they reviewed that tape, and you really look at those shots that Sean plays, mm -hmm. those were really razor precision type shots, especially for a jump shot. Um, I'm not sure exactly how much taller Sean is than Q. Uh, I, I kind of feel like they're pretty even. Yeah. Maybe Sean's got a little bit of height on him, but that shot is something that I've seen Sean practice and hone over the last season. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen him doing it in practice. Um, it's kind of like this shot that everybody's trying to master these days. And um, 
it was really well played shot and maybe it wasn't even obvious to Q because mm -hmm. um, it hit him in kind of in a soft spot maybe bounced down and it rolled down his arm as you see in the replay mm -hmm. so a very impressive uh, performance by Sean there able to take out a very confident uh, fearless opponent in Q you know I think Sean's rise throughout this series is kind of indicative of the way he plays you know starts off a little bit slow as he starts to get momentum he gains confidence you know the first set we saw you know he was kind of starting off slow was able to win got some confidence started talking you know in the next set you know versus his mentor gunner you know again start off a little bit slow as soon as he saw that you know gunner had a little bit of rust on him gained that confidence again same thing with q you yep. know this has gone this has basically been his storyline of him being the underdog him playing slow at first Maybe not necessarily uh, speed wise, but just kind of feeling out his opponent, um, you know, staying focused. And then once he gets that confidence, once he's up a little bit, you know, his confidence just skyrockets and it's helped him get to this point, you know. Um, sure. I mean, even in the the ability to challenge a call, you know, that's something that is it comes from confidence. It's believing that I hit you, you know, we saw a lot of people in this series in this competition that just quit mm -hmm. and Sean could have easily just quit there and be like okay I lost mm -hmm. but he was confident that he scored that point he asked for the challenge and when they reviewed the tape it was evident mm -hmm. that what he saw and what he believed really did happen so props to you Sean I mean for really like standing up for yourself because that's really important in competition as well mm -hmm. you gotta you gotta believe in yourself and I think that's a sign of somebody who's starting to learn that yeah and definitely using the rules, using the policies to your advantage. You know, yeah. um, it's definitely something that needs to be kept in mind, especially when you're playing one versus one. You know, you stand up for yourself, just like you were saying. Sean was confident enough to stand up on himself. And it just comes down to game plan. You know, knowing the rules is one thing as well as, you know, executing them and using them to help you out in moments like these. Yeah, and, you know, people don't like to win off a of technicality, but this is what happens in sports. You know, it happens over and over again throughout the history of almost every sport. Yeah. You know, there sometimes there's bad calls, sometimes there's a good call. Mm -hmm. Luckily, in this case, it was a good call. Thanks for checking out another episode of KWA Insight. On this next episode, we'll be taking a look at the final matches. This is definitely something you're not going to want to miss.